Let's we begin. There's a few announcements. Um, I know that at least one other person wants to make some as well. But uh, this is a, a special service, a time of celebration and recognition of the ending of a covenant. You were, I hope, or at least you each uh, picked up a rock, one for household on the way in this morning. Um, they're not for throwing, I hope. <laughs> um, there will come a time when it'll maybe make sense to you that you picked up a rock. I hope it does. And uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, Susie is going to be coming back into the office. Um, that being said, the church will still be locked uh, because technically we're still in that stage of uh, our life. So uh, if you need to come into the building, uh, it would be a good idea to call Susie ahead of time. Uh, there aren't going to be many groups. I know there's going to be one in here this week, but that's the only one that we're aware of. So don't get confused if you see some people coming in. That's all planned. But uh, we, we now have to be concerned about uh, keeping Susie safe in her space. So uh, we will make, or at least attempt to make Susie's office Susie's office, so that um, no one should have need to go into that space for now. Um, offering uh, is being handled by Susie, so uh, offering counters need not go in there, um, and uh, we'll keep that safe, sacred for Susie. Also, Many of you may have noticed, and you already know this because you've been here for a long time, that the door into that office is a, is a Dutch door. There's a top and bottom that open separately. So Susie will probably have that, the bottom of that door closed. So when you come in to see Susie, you can come in as far as that door and, uh, and have a chat with her in her office. And uh, we'll keep that space clean and, and sanitized uh, for the time being. Um, also, uh, good news beginning next Sunday, um, the Reverend Dr. Peter Wyatt will be uh, the minister here for uh, a time, for I believe three months, until um, Reverend Diane, help me out here, Knowles, thank you. Reverend Diane Knowles will, uh, will be coming and uh, you will be covenanting with her. So that's kind of what's going on. Now, um, Will, yeah. there you are. Do uh, you have an announcement? No. I do? <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to. It's so busy. Okay. <laughs> I think we did that. Good morning. I have a big smile on my face. It's wonderful to see you all masked and all. This is our, our final Sunday for our transition team. And I wanted to just tell you just a little bit more so, and do some thank yous. Um, our team started more than two years ago with nine members. And over the time, early on, Jen Nicholson left us with other commitments to her family and her job. Will Gibson stepped down to become the chair of council, and uh, that was this past February. And Lynn Smith left us only at the end, but her spirit and her input lingers on, so evident in all of our transition work. She helped with the profile, the minister's position description, and her work became even more important when she went on the search team 
to be sure that all of the transition teams fact gathering your input was intact and remembered in the selection of our new minister. You, the congregation, have been so patient as we have worked through this process, some grudgingly, most supportive of our requests needed to complete the tasks that are in our ministry. <coughs> While the transition team has thanked and given gifts on behalf of Trinity that express appreciation and gratitude, we are indebted to Reverend Nina Fulford and Reverend Steve Willey for their guidance, their patience, and encouragement through the past two years working with us at all of our meetings to help us as regional reps from, uh, from the Shining Waters region. Murray told us that we would be traveling through the wilderness and our experiences would be likened to that of long ago. There have been trials and tribulations, losses and gains, and all the while, Murray has been steadfast in his leadership that got us here today. Interim ministry is different than we thought, but Murray has been unwavering in the direction needed to accomplish the goals and tasks during this time. And for that, we are both grateful and thankful. Are there any other announcements this morning? Then I'm going to do one more thing. At the start of our transition team meetings, we get this candle. It was to remind us of the Spirit of God's presence in our midst and also reminded us of those members of the team who weren't with us that night or that day, that we were reminded that their spirits, uh, although their physical presence wasn't there, their spirit was with us, and um, we could we could invite that presence amongst us and enjoy that presence amongst us. And so today, um, the last gathering of the transition team as a team, I'm lighting a candle, reminding us that God's Spirit is with us and those Those of the team who are not with us now, in body, remain with us in spirit. Thanks be to God.
stand for the call to worship if you are able. The living God is the beginning of our journey, the end of our journey, our guide along the way. There is no happiness compared to the joy of journeying in the presence of the Holy One, whose wonderful love exceeds the sum of all human loves. Therefore, we will rejoice. Standing on the threshold between memory and hope, let us sing of the steadfast love of God. As we remember all that has been and anticipate all that is to come, let us worship and proclaim the faithfulness of God to all generations. In number 288, in Voices from that.
and in this new beginning. Amen. The chose for the gospel lesson today, the, the closing part of the gospel according to Matthew, what's become known as the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Thank you.
just to kind of bring you up to speed, Joshua was uh, appointed, called, appointed uh, to uh, take over for Moses um, just before the people crossed the Jordan into the Promised Land. And uh, so this is this is kind of a, a history book. And we're at the point now where Israel is at the Jordan and uh, they're given some instructions. So I'm beginning to read the first verse of the third chapter and into the fourth chapter. Out from Shittim with all the Israelites and they came to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it so that you may know the way you should go. For you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, a distance of about 2,000 cubits. Do not come any nearer to it. Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. To the priests, Joshua said, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on in front of the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went in in front of the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, Draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, by this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fall will drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the ark of the covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off from Adam, the city that is beside Zarephus, while those flowing toward the sea of the Arabah, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on the dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Select twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them, Take twelve 
12 stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood. Carry them over with you and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the 12 men from the Israelites, whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, for one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall say to them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in the front of the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Then it crossed over the, crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So those stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. The Israelites did as Joshua commanded. They took up twelve stones out of the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, as the Lord told Joshua, carried them over with them to the place where they camped, and laid them down there. Joshua set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And there, and there are there to, and they are there to this day. Hymn number 651. <laughs> Intentional 
interim ministry are over. You're allowed to cheer if you want. You might not have to hear those words put together that way for a very long time. I have some more good news. And that is that you're not going to stop hearing and using the words transition. The word transition. Because really, you have only just begun. And that's good news. God told Joshua, you're about to lead these people across the Jordan. Their interim ministry time in the wilderness is over. You're going to cross the Jordan and some Something new is going to happen. A new beginning. A new beginning in the promised land. And it's, it's not that you have arrived. Yes, when you cross, you'll be there. But you have a lot of work to do to live into the vision of being the people of God in the promised land. You have a lot of work to do in order to be my people. And it's interesting, I think, that they were told to take a rock. There's not very much exciting about most of our rocks. They're gray and black. Some of you may have some pink or red in your rock. Probably not much else. It's just a rock. Our Aboriginal people have a lot of tradition, a lot of spirituality, a lot of mythology about rocks. You see, rocks are really old. They're about the oldest thing we have. That's why they're rocks, because they've been around for a long time. Little bits of sand and various other things have been pressed together. Together they got hard and formed rocks. A geologist would pick up any one of the rocks that you brought in with you this morning from your entry. Probably be able to tell you a long story about where that rock came from and what happened over the many centuries since that rock began. One group of native peoples talk about grandparent stones, most notably grandfather stones. And I only just learned, I've heard about grandfather stones, but I only just learned that a true grandfather stone has to be round. Like a, like a ball. And there are round rocks. And they, they become the sacred rocks because they are so old. Because they carry 
the story of creation right there. They have the wisdom of the world right there. And our northern native people, all of you know about, you know, the shook, the things that are made of rocks that sometimes look like human beings. You see them sometimes just driving down the highway up on Rock Cliff, and some of you may have an oak shook in your, your garden someplace. There's a whole lot of meaning in those oak shooks. They tell stories, those oak shooks. They give direction, they give instruction, and they're made with the oldest pieces of creation that we can find. They say, we were here. They say, this is a good place to fish, or a good place to hunt. Or this is where you need to change direction and go another way. Or this is where you need to keep on going the way you've been going. They tell us a lot of things, these rocks. You begin this time of transition with a vision. We are Christians working to be a vibrant, progressive, innovative, faith-filled congregation. Our doors and our hearts are open to all, doubters, searchers, and believers. In our centrally located and well-maintained building, we will be a place of community where opportunities exist for everyone as we encourage and support each other on our individual faith journeys. It's a, it's a monstrous vision. And so you're going to need some markers along the way. And the markers are going to be the times and the places where you make those things true. Where you say, yes, that's who we are. Yes, we are progressive. Yes, we are vibrant. Yes, we are innovative. Yes, we are a faith-filled congregation. And how do you know when you've reached your vision? By turning around and looking at where you have the markers. Where are your stones? Maybe metaphorical stones, but where are your stones? As you move along this vision path, be aware of where you're making your mark where you are saying this is us and this is who we are and when when you can say yes this is where we're supposed to go put a marker down that might be doing something it might be building something. It might be ending something. But it'll be something. And you'll all know what it means. And it'll be a marker for your journey. God's covenant with us never changes. But our covenants with one another do change. We gather now to mark the ending of the covenant between Murray, Trinity, United Church Congregation, and Shining Waters Region. Friends, you appointed me to serve with you in the Ministry of Transition, Word, Sacrament, 
and pastoral care. At the time of our covenant, you presented me with a number of symbols. The Bible is the symbol of the ministry of the Word among us. May God's Word continue to challenge, nurture, and inspire you. The font is the symbol of our baptism, the place of our birth into the body of Christ. May you continue to welcome new members through the living waters of our faith. seek wisdom in adapting and transforming that will continue to bring new light to Trinity, opening ourselves to all the possibilities as we continue a flight path forward. As we follow the example of the Dragonfly, our symbol of transition, it is now time for Trinity to move into the next leg of our journey. We have spent time gathering the tools and understanding needed to live out the mission statement we created. Trinity will now learn to fly to take those tools and knowledge into the community around us as we implement the vision we have created. Let's pray. 
gracious and loving God, you have bound us together for a time as minister and people to strengthen and encourage the work of your kingdom in this time and place. We give you thanks for the ministries which we have shared. Parent God, we thank you for your patience with us. We thank you for your forgiveness and for your mercy. We thank you for your guiding presence and for the deeper knowledge of you and of each other which we have gained. Teaching God, we thank you for opening our hearts and minds to your word, spoken, heard, and lived, for restoring us with your love, for feeding us so abundantly with the sacraments, for encouraging and leading us in transition. And now we pray, be with those who leave and with those who stay. Grant that all of us drawing ever nearer to you may always be close to each other in the transforming power of your love. Amen. Like every community of faith, Trinity United Church is constantly changing. Loved ones come and go through, throughout the life of our community. With the poignancy that mixes joy, sadness, and thanksgiving, we recognize these times of passage, times of endings and beginnings. Today, we share the time of farewell with Murray, whose time as our minister has come to an end. I thank you, all the people of Trinity United Church, your council, the transition team, other leaders, your exceptional staff, members and friends, for the love, the kindness, and the support that you have shown me these past two years. I ask for your understanding and for your forgiveness for the mistakes that I have made and for those expectations which remain unmet. With sadness I acknowledge those things not accomplished. With deep joy I recall the many things that we have been able to accomplish together in this time of transition. As I leave this place, I treasure many wonderful memories of the people of Trinity and of the experiences we have shared together. Trinity 
transition team from their covenanted responsibilities. Give our deepest gratitude, thankfulness, and overflowing joy. We thank our transition team for their dedication, their guidance, and their love. Friends of Trinity United Church, now release Murray as, a, as your minister. Do you offer him your encouragement and support as he sets out on the next step in his journey? We do. Murray, do you release the people of Trinity United Church from our pastoral relationship with you? I do, with God's help. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, your love for us is ever Help each of us to learn with faith, hope, and joy to the future which rests in your care. The time of all we have been gathered in your name has seen laughter and tears, hopes and disappointments. Guide and strengthen us as we cherish these memories and help us as we now move.
with God ahead of us and beside us, behind us, we arrive at the end of our journey. It has changed us. We have left behind those things that are no longer part of us so that we can move forward unencumbered and free. We mark this place.